around that way and when you get here just sit in this chair right here okay I need to ask one more thing before we get started I need everyone just to stand up and I can see you I've talked to the few people who are in wheelchairs they're gonna raise their hands okay now you can sit back down okay I'm sorry one more time if you just stand up one more time just one more time Thank you. Just, just that's a promise right there in the center. We're looking at you. Just one more time. Just stand up. It's okay. Okay. Now we can sit back down. All right. I'm going to tell you a quick story about meeting a man named John Morgan. He walked 15 years ago into our offices and he walked in and he said, I want to work here. And we said, well, do you have any credentials? I mean, are you, we're, we were a creative shop. And he said, nope. I just believe in what you're doing and I want to work here. And so because you can't put a price tag on Eager, we hired John Morgan to answer our phones. And the first day I walked into work, he was there. He, went, he was like this over the phones. <laughs> first time it rang. Good morning, play. How can I help you? People started to call just to hear John Morgan answer the phone. How can I help you? Oh, John, I'm just calling to get a little energy. <laughs> Two weeks into it, he was a drummer. That was his passion. He brought his entire drum set into the office and put it in the corner. And I said, John, what are you doing? He said, just wait and see. And he went over and went off on the drums. And everyone came out and he said, morning meeting starting. That's how he started meetings from then on. <laughs> then he started to hand pick people's on hold music because he said our on hold music was lame, that it sounded like the phone companies where they try and calm you down before you actually get to someone. He said, no, I want people to be jacked up when I talk to them, right? So people started to ask me to put back on hold just to hear their song. And what I want to talk to you about today is the energy. Oh, come on now. This is right here. This is your chair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right here. This is the energy that we the energy that we show up with, okay? That's what I want to talk about. The energy that we show up with. Because the thing is is that we each have this incredible power every day to affect the moment that we're in. The people that we're around, our families, our companies, our communities, our cultures, and it's all about just the energy that we show up with. And I don't know about you, but I am tired. I had a baby in May, and I have not slept through the night since then, and I'm exhausted, but I still have this energy requirement, right? Because I, I can change stuff with my energy. So I think the important thing for us to do right now is to talk about where we can get energy, because we all need it. There's an energy crisis going on, and if you don't believe it, think about how much that guy up there did not want to stand up for the second time I told him to. <laughs> He's like, really, again? Like, all my weight on my legs? Well, this is a lot to ask. I had stuff in my lap. I was very comfortable. This is a big thing. I paid money for this seat. Are you cool? I'm cool. Because what's neat is you used to be there, and now you're here. That's pretty cool. I think so, too. That's the best house, best seat in the house. Okay. So the first place that we can get energy is just in ideas. There's so much energy in ideas. Let me give you an example. What if a cell phone had a ring that sounded like this? So when you were in a meeting, you could say, excuse me, i got to go get a little bit of water. <laughs> what if they boarded planes, not by the seat you're in, but talking, no talking? All those who'd like to talk, please board the plane. We're putting you in the back. <laughs> Brilliant. There's energy and ideas. There's energy. What if the ice cream man actually dropped off dinner? Like, would that change our lives? There's just energy in those ideas, and there's energy in sharing those ideas. The next place you can get energy is in a good conversation, in a really good conversation, not a conversation like this, hey, what's up? Nothing, Nothing much. Isn't that what we say? Hey, what's, uh, what's going on? Nothing. Woo, the energy, it's like overwhelming. Thank you for connecting, right? We need to change. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. It's a southern town. When you grow up in Richmond, Virginia, you have to go to a lot of cocktail parties. And the only thing that happens is the hostess meets you at the door and she says, how is your mama? And then everybody asks the same question. It's painful. Your only option is to drink. <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to ask people, hey, what's your story? Right? Because then we're going to skip the how is your mama stuff and we're going to get to right to what we're both passionate about. We can skip all of that and get right there. 
Cool, so I think we can all steal a page from the Southern Cocktail Party and have enough imaginary drinks in our life, I said imaginary, so that the person sitting next to you is slightly more interesting than they actually are. <laughs> There's energy in that. There's energy in that. The, the power of a conversation, it's so, in Holland, in the library system, they believe so much in the power of a conversation that you can actually check out a person, not a book, but a person, and go have a conversation with them. How cool is that? All right, so there's power and ideas, energy, energy and ideas. There's energy in a conversation. It is also energy and humor. There's so much energy and humor that we miss every day because this is serious, right? The economy is bad. We need to be serious. I was in a, um, a Hollywood cemetery in Richmond, Virginia. I was walking around looking at the tombstones, and I came across this one, and it said, Margarita Daniels. She always said her feet were killing her, but nobody would listen. Is there anything more serious than death? You know, you're supposed to be reverent, and yet somehow this beautiful woman, or at least the people who lived on after her, made energy exist beyond her. This is notion of humor, right? We cannot take life so seriously, and we do. It's very serious, right? A little bit of that. So ideas, conversation, humor. And then the next thing is just the unknown. There is so much energy in the unknown, and we fight this tooth and nail because we have our to-do list. And I wake up in the morning, and we get our to-do list, and we have a plan for what's going to happen, and the day is going to go like we said, and it will be a great day if it all goes exactly according to plan, right? right. The Ritz-Carlton has three levels of service, to do what's expected, to do what's requested, and to surprise and delight. And when we spend all of our time doing what is expected, it sucks us of energy. There is no energy in our to-do list. We've got to be led by the idea of ideas. My parents just got back from safari. They went to Africa. My mother has these long lists of things she wants to see in her mind. And her leader came up and said this. Listen, all of you, we're about to go. We're about to go see some incredible things. But some of you came here with a list. Then here's what I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> There's no SEAL show at 2 p.m. <laughs> because we're in Africa, but also because you're not on vacation at SeaWorld. This is an adventure. This is an adventure, and you can't plan an adventure. You just have to be present in an adventure. You just have to believe and be present in an adventure. There's one more place where there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy in recognizing the brilliance in others. And I'd like you to think of just one thing that you're proud of about yourself. Just right here, I'm going to give you some, give you some time. I ran at the University of Virginia, and I was in a cross-country meet one time. It was the ACC championship, and I was uh, cross-country, you run 3.1 miles in a race. And I got to mile two, and I was worn out, and all of my belief in myself was gone. And I came around the corner, and there was this girl standing behind a tree. She was a freshman, and she yelled, I believe in you, Courtney! And I just, I've never forgotten it. It was so powerful. She believed, Jamie Sutherland believes in me. I can keep going. Jamie Sutherland believes in me. I can make it to this next mile. Just that belief, that energy that she gave me. There was so much energy just in that. So I'd like you to stand up for a second, all right? I want you to stand right here. I want you to fill the room with your energy. You kind of have to, yeah. Yeah, a little bit like that, all right? Open yourself up. Oh, yeah, a little right here. And before you tell us, okay, I want you to, share, I want you to say, I've got a toast to myself. You can join me if you like. And then I want you to say, I'm very proud of, and tell us what it is, OK? Really, but hang on, fill the, fill the room, fill it up. Now, when he does that, we kind of have to have a response, right? Because it would be kind of lame for him to share this, and then we just sort of sit there, or do the golf clap. <laughs> nah. Because really, honestly, the thing is, is that you're not up here, because you could have been, right? So he had the guts to come up here. So I want everybody in the audience to look at this nice man, Trig. That's right. Trig Watson. I want you to think something nice about Trig Watson. Look at him and find something you like about him. Maybe you're like, if I weren't married, I'd date him, right? <laughs> or I wish I had his hair. Or I wish I had his guts. Or gosh, I can't wait to hear what it is he's going to say. All right, and then once he says it, you have to have a response, right? You have to have an energetic response back because that, that's the give take of energy, all right? Are we ready? You can't have stuff in your lap. And the guy up there, I'm watching you. <laughs> like, we're looking for you and your energy. Are you ready? OK. okay. Everybody, I'd like to make a toast to myself. If I have an idea and then I put it into the world and it doesn't work, I'm going to be very persistent and keep trying until it does work. And if it doesn't work, 
I'm probably gonna find a new idea and work on that one and keep going until I die. <laughs> Woo! So Trig and I want to wish you luck, OK? We want to wish you luck in thinking up new ideas. And we want to wish you luck in having the courage to share them with people. And having a little bit of courage to not take life so seriously, right? We want to wish you luck on not having everything planned out. And mostly, we want to wish you luck on the adventure that you're all surely on. Thank you.